Welcome to the program. It was supposed to be a day of celebration to mark the end of Ramadan. Instead, Gaza and Israel have both seen an upsurge in violence. Well, this is the scene live in Gaza now, where flares have been lighting up the night sky, followed by intense shelling. Earlier, eight people were killed following an explosion on a park in a refugee camp. Seven of those were children. Israel and Hamas are blaming each other for this attack. So far, 1,095 Palestinians have been killed and another 6,500 wounded since the Israeli offensive started three weeks ago. And, as we were saying, four Israeli soldiers have been killed in a mortar attack on a kibbutz in the Eshkol region of southern Israel. That's near the border with Gaza. It brings the total number of Israeli soldiers killed to 48. Meanwhile, Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, has signalled he will not back down from the offensive, warning instead that it will be a protracted one. Well, a little earlier, our reporter, Imtiaz Tayab, who's in Gaza, was updating us on the situation there when this happened. Take a look. 50% of people here don't have jobs, poverty is widespread, the situation is incredibly desperate, and it seems that almost every two years or so, they are bombarded by Israeli forces. So people, sorry, we just heard a missile uh, just launched over my shoulder, and you could hear it uh, uh, land just perhaps maybe a kilometer or so away from where I'm standing now. Uh, as we've been saying, it really is an unpredictable situation here in Gaza. When we hear missiles like that, you can only imagine that it's landing uh, in a neighborhood, an area which is densely populated, uh, and that inevitably leads to death and injuries as well. When it comes to people leaving these areas, these areas where the Israeli military warns them to leave in recorded messages, uh, the truth is many people simply don't know. In fact, I'm just going to pan over my shoulder. You can see a group of children there walking. They're obviously leaving their neighborhood uh, concerned for their safety. We're in the center of town. Uh, we don't know which part of Gaza they are from, uh, but they're obviously clearly leaving. And as you can see, many of them are extremely young, just small children. And you'll also notice that people don't have bags with them. All they really have are the clothes on their back. Um, and we can only imagine that they're leaving those areas which are being heavily bombarded. All right, let's go to Imtiaz live now. He joins us on the phone from Gaza. Imtiaz, clearly an escalation of the Israeli bombardment tonight. Just tell us what you've been seeing and hearing on the ground there. You're absolutely right, Pierre. And it sounds like a very large escalation. In fact, uh, I've been speaking to some people here, and they're saying that this bombardment of Gaza this evening uh, seems to be equal to the heavy bombardment uh, of this coastal strip on the evening that Israel announced that it was launching a ground offensive. Now, that was around two weeks ago, or just over two weeks ago. Uh, and that really just gives you a sense of just uh, what an evening the people here in Gaza have, the early hours of this this morning. All we hear sort of through for, for several hours now is just the constant thud uh, and thumping uh, of shelling uh, and of airstrikes. And periodically, very close to where we are now, you will hear the whistle uh, of missiles as well. So uh, again, a very unpredictable situation here in Gaza. And one would imagine uh, scenes uh, of absolute uh, devastation in these areas and these densely populated neighborhoods which are being hit. Um, Imtiaz, we were playing some pictures a few minutes ago uh, of you uh, reporting earlier when we saw you duck uh, as a missile or two whizzed over your head. Just talk us through what happened there. That's right, Darren. And we were talking, of course, uh, just about the current situation here in Gaza when missiles whizzed past. And that's probably the third or fourth uh, missile to sort of whiz past us in about two hours' time. In fact, you can probably just hear, as I speak to you over the phone, loud bangs. Uh, those are the sounds of flares, and these flares illuminate uh, these neighborhoods. We understand at least three neighborhoods here in Gaza which are being targeted, at least according to the Israeli military. But inevitably, when these flares go off, uh, we hear airstrikes, uh, whether it's missiles or other kinds of artillery falling 
on these neighborhoods. Uh, and uh, as we've been saying, uh, there are at least three neighborhoods that are being heavily bombarded. We understand that some buildings already have been destroyed completely. Uh, and, and while I was talking, uh, you may have also seen that uh, we saw families fleeing the fighting as well, young families, small children, uh, with nothing but uh, the clothes on their backs. So a very difficult and unpredictable evening here in Gaza. Imtiaz, uh, Israel has warned residents of those three neighborhoods you just mentioned there to leave. I mean, are people heeding those warnings and, and, and where will they go? That's the big question. Where do these people go? Bear in mind, Gaza has been bombarded heavily now for over three weeks. Um, some of these areas have already seen heavy fighting. If these people haven't left these areas already, it's because they simply have nowhere to go. Now, the UN has set up shelters in various areas across Gaza and indeed here in Gaza City. Uh, these shelters are inevitably schools. Uh, but the conditions there aren't great. Although there's food and water, uh, dozens, if not hundreds, of families are crammed into small rooms and all they have are thin mattresses to sleep on uh, and as we saw earlier in some of that footage these families don't have anything with them they leave their homes in such a hurry that they don't have any chance to take any kind of personal effects all again all they have are the clothes on their back uh, so again we also as well as the damage and the destruction caused by these airstrikes which inevitably lead to to injuries uh, and deaths uh, we also have a humanitarian situation where uh, uh, we understand already 200,000 people at least are internally displaced. Um, Imtiaz, you talk uh, about the humanitarian situation there as we're watching uh, live pictures coming in of the, the flares lighting up the night sky as the Israelis continue to bombard Gaza. Um, just what about normal supplies, Imtiaz, food, water, etc.? How difficult has it been getting just the basic supplies into civilians there? Well, look, the Israeli military and the Israeli government take great pains to point out the fact that every day they send in trucks of food and rations and medical supplies to Gaza. But notice the language. It is Israel sending in those food and those supplies. The reason for that is, is Gaza is under siege. It's under a blockade. Uh, very few goods can come into Gaza from anywhere unless it's from or agreed by the Israeli government. So over the past eight years, uh, this tiny area, which is home to 1.7 million people, uh, has received very little in the way of goods whatsoever. In fact, uh, if you just look at the economics of Gaza, over 50 percent of people here are unemployed. And when you have such high levels of unemployment, that also leads to very serious social challenges as well. And that is what many Gazans see, many, many Gazans, I should say, are fighting for. They want to see an end to the blockade. They want to, in their own words, join the world. They don't want all their borders sealed. They want to be able to travel freely. But that's simply not the case for them.